students good morning to all today we are going to discuss about new topic new chapter materials metals and non metals in this chapter we are going to discuss about firstly metals about metals and then non metals mainly we are going to discuss about the physical and chemical properties of metals and non metals and also the examples of both one okay so now we can move to the chapter materials metals and non metals it is the part 1 part of first video so listen carefully okay here in this video i included some important topics such as metals physical properties of metals such as malleability ductility sonorous and good conductors these are the four physical properties of metals then examples of metal and non metals and examples they are examples these are the main points we discussed we want to discuss in this video okay okay now we can move to the topics in your day to day life you are familiar with the number of materials right in your day to day life in your house uh, outside your home etc you are very familiar with number of materials give me some examples okay iron aluminium coal etc are examples of such materials right iron aluminium wood copper etc are examples of such materials so we can say that this al aluminium iron and copper etc include which category metals or non metals yes these are metals right so we can say that it includes iron aluminium copper etc includes in metals included metals so we can say that the other materials such as coal wood etc includes in non metals right firstly here firstly we are going to discuss about the metals okay now we can move to the table it shows object or material and appearance okay appearance shiny or dull right and hardness very hard or not very hard so we can categorize iron coal sulfur aluminum copper into different properties okay so iron is iron is shiny or dull yes it is shiny okay then what about its hardness the, uh, so hard or we it is uh, soft yes it is very hard right then coal coal is dull and not very hard okay then sulfur what is sulfur sulfur is a tasteless odorless brittle solid substance it is pale yellow in color it is not much as shine okay it is a dull material so we can say that sulfur is a dull appearance its appearance is dull and it is not very hard when we try to beat it what happens it will break okay then aluminum we are very familiar with aluminum utensils right okay then this aluminum utensils uh, are very shiny appearance and also is very hard and copper what have been seen is yes, copper is seen in the electrical wires right yes so it is shiny and also is very hard right okay so we can say that which one is shiny appearance and very hard which met ah, yes iron aluminum and copper are shining appearance and also they are very hard but in the case of coal and sulfur they are dull and not very hard so we can categorize this iron aluminum copper in metals they are metals and coal and sulfur are non metals so we can say that in this examples this shining appearance and hardness distinguish metals from non metals so i want to ask one question that is this shiny appearance and hardness is 
chemical property or physical property? Yes, it is a physical properties. This shining appearance and hardness are physical properties. Yes, physical properties includes appearance, texture, color, order, melting point, boiling point, etc. Right? So, we can say that we can distinguish metals from non-metals by their physical and chemical properties. Okay, so we can move to the physical properties of metals. Okay, physical properties. Have you ever seen a blacksmith beating an iron piece? Or an article made up of iron like a spade, a shovel, an axe etc.? Do you find a change in the shape of these articles on beating? What happens when these articles beating? Yes, they become flattened. When we beat, when we try to beat iron, it gets flattened, right? If, would you expect a similar change if you try to beat a wood log? If you try to beat a wood log, what happens? Yes, it, it will break. If it flatten, no, it will not flatten. It will break, right? So, we can move to one activity. Okay, what is the activity? Listen here. Take a small iron nail, a cold piece, a piece of thick aluminium wire and a pencil lead. These four items. Small iron nail, a cold piece and a piece of thick aluminium wire and a pencil lead. Then try to beat them one by one with a hammer. Okay, what happens to these materials? When we try to beat iron nail, what happens? If it break or if it flatten, yes, it will flatten. It will flatten. Then, if we try to beat cold piece, what happens? It will break. Cold piece is a, it's very, it's not much harder. So, it will break on beating. Then, when aluminum wire beat, what happens? It will flatten because it is very hard material. Then, pencil lead, what happens? It also break. So, we can say that, yes. This iron nail, aluminium wire, iron nail and aluminium wire are metals. So, when we beat metals, what happens? They will flatten, right? And when we try to beat this cold piece and pencil lead, that is non-metals, what happens? They will break, right? Okay, you saw that the shape of the iron nail and the aluminium wire changed on beating, right? If they were beaten harder, this could be changed into what? Yes, they could be, this could be changed into sheets. You might be familiar with silver foil used for decorating sweets. And also you must also be familiar with the aluminium foil. Right? Okay. Aluminium foil is used for wrapping food. So we can say that metals having the property called malleability. What is the property of physical, physical property of metal? Yes, this malleability, the property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets. Okay, when silver beaten into thin sheets, it becomes a silver sheet. And also aluminium, when we try to beat this aluminium, it will flatten and becomes a sheet. It is known as aluminium foil. We use it for wrapping foods. So, we can say that metals having property malleability. What is malleability? The property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets. Thin sheets is called malleability. Okay. So, we studied first property malleability. First physical most important property of metal malleability. Okay. What is malleability? The property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets. Understand? Okay. Now, where do you find the use of aluminium and copper wire? What is the, this picture? Yes, this is a copper wire. Right. Where you see these wires? Yes, you can see this copper wire in your electrical wires. Right? Okay. Then, did you see 
Have you seen wires of coal? Have you seen wires of coal? No. Why? Yes, this is a property of metals. Right? Only metals can drawn into wires. If coal can drawn into wires or wood can drawn into wires? No. Only metals can drawn into wires. This is the property. This is another physical property of metal. It is called ductility. That is the property of metals by which it can be drawn into wires. It can be drawn into wires is called what? Ductility. Okay. Then the second physical property of metals is what? Ductility. Okay. Firstly, malleability. Second one, ductility. Okay. Okay. Have you seen iron bells in temples? Okay. Have you seen wooden bells? No. You always see iron bells. Right? Why these temples uses iron bells instead of wooden bells? Okay. When we use these iron bells, they make sound. But if wooden bells make sound? No. So we can say that metals produce ringing sounds when we struck hard. Right? If non-metals make sound? No. So you can do an activity in your home that dropping an iron sheet or a plate on the floor. What happens? They produce sound. Then also drop a piece of coal or a wood. What happens if it makes a sound? No. So we can say that only metals make ringing sound. So this is a property, one of the physical property of metals known as what? Another property is sonorous. Sonorous means metals produce ringing sounds when struck hard are said to be sonorous. Okay. They produce ringing sounds when struck hard. Okay. This is the another physical property of metals. So, we discussed three properties. First one, malleability. Second one, ductility. Third one, sonorous. Understand? Can you hold a hot metallic pan which is without a plastic or wooden handle? Can you hold? No. What happens? It will hurt you. Right? And in the case of uh, you ha must have seen an electrician using this screwdriver. Right? Yes. What type of handle is this? What kind of handle does it have? It have plastic handle. Right? Why we use this plastic handle? Yes, so we can say that in the case of in these two cases, metals conduct heat. The first case, metal, metal conduct heat. So, we can hurt without pan, without handle, right? In the second case, we can say that metals conduct electricity. So, it will conduct electricity and it will make trouble, right? Okay, so we can say that Metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. Okay, this is the fourth physical property that metals can conduct heat and electricity. Okay, then we can now move to one activity that make an electrical circuit to test whether electricity can pass through an object or not. You are already in your sixth standard. You are studied how to make electrical circuit. Okay, then perform the activity with following various objects. An electrical circuit or electric tester is like this. It have one battery and electrical wires and one iron nail here and also there is a bulb. Okay, so make this type of electrical circuit. Then in this electrical circuit we use iron nail. Okay, it is a metal. Hmm? So we can test whether the following objects conduct electricity or not. Okay. So, which are the materials we used here? First one, iron rod or nail. Okay. When we used iron nail, what happens? This yes, what happens when you when we use iron nail? Yes, when we use iron nail, this bulb will glow. That is 
that is this electrical circuit conduct electricity right so we can say that iron nail is a good conductor right okay when we use the sulfur what happens when we use the sulfur instead of iron nail if it if this bulb blink no does not glow right so we can say that sulfur is a poor conductor it does not conduct electricity and also in the case of coal piece it does not conduct electricity it is a poor conductor but when we use copper wire it will also conduct electricity so we can say that this iron rod and copper wires are metals and they are good conductors of electricity okay so we can conclude that metals having physical properties such as malleability ductility sonorous good conductors of heat and electricity and also they are very hard and lustrous okay lustrous means what shining okay so metals having the different properties physical properties such as what malleability ductility sonorous good conductors of heat and electricity hard and lustrous okay then we can move to the next topic non metals what are the non metals some examples give me some examples of non metals sulfur coal wood etc are non metals phosphorus etc are non metals okay and we can move to the physical properties of non metals what are the physical properties is non metals are good conductors no they are poor conductors of heat and electricity right and if it is sonorous no it is not sonorous it is not lustrous it is not malleable it is not ductile and it is not very hard these are the physical properties of non metals okay so we can say that metals are good conductors sonorous lustrous malleable ductile very hard but non metals are not sonorous lustrous malleable ductile and very hard and not good conductors of heat and electricity okay so these are all about my video so we can move to the last session exercise yes some questions for you you should write these questions and answers in your notebook okay i checked it first one which of the following can be beaten into thin sheets zinc phosphorus sulfur oxygen okay second one what do you mean by ductility what do you mean by ductility third one write any three physical properties of metals fourth one write two examples of non metals okay thank you students